This is Soapbox Radio. Potting it out there. Potting it out there with my lime boots. The Lifestyle Edit. Hey guys, it's Ryan. It's Thursday afternoon at 4 o'clock. Coming to you live this afternoon from the studio. 24, uh, 27 boxes. Uh, no, we not have, have not lost three. 27 <laughs> boxes here in Melville. And the sun is starting to come out in the studio. We, um, outside, starting to have a good day. Looks like we're going to have a good day today. I know we're going to have a great show. Welcome to Soap, Soapbox Radio. And I'm really excited for today's show. As we consider a rather meaty issue, which I believe is rather relevant to us here and now in South Africa. Before we get into the show, some feedback. You may recall from my first show this year, which I chatted to Anastasia Tiero about her initiative to bring sanitary products to young girls in rural Zimbabwe, thereby keeping them in school. Anastasia confirmed her dates for her next trip up to Zim, which she has now told me are for, set for mid-May 2018. Um, engagement with the retailers and the manufacturers continue as we seek ways to assist Anastasia and her partner Stanford in this worthy cause. Keep listening as we plan towards this trip and I'll soon be asking you to assist as we build up um, to this trip in May. Back to today's show, let me tell you about this great new upliftment project I found out about recently. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go! Great, so I have in studio with me today Ryan Tayak and Gareth Ruttle, who together with a third friend, uh, Nick Braby, so I founded a non-profit organization called Sitanda, Sitanda Upliftment Projects in September 2015. Um, driven by a passion and a purpose matched with a common interest of giving back to the community, the guys are dedicated to making a difference to the lives of those less fortunate right here in South Africa. Sitanda, which means we love in Zulu, is a platform that allows ordinary people like you and I to make a difference by giving back to the community. Through their various events and fundraising efforts, an environment and culture of collaboration is fostered by Satanda, um, allowing you and I to engage with the greater community, thereby making a positive impact. Satanda's mission is to unlock childhood discovery and uplift individuals through the foundation of early childhood, childhood development centers in underprivileged communities. With interest done, let's jump straight into today's discussion and meet Ryan and Gareth. <laughs> Welcome, guys. Thanks, Ryan, thanks so much for having us. us. Good to have you yeah. guys here today. Awesome um, location. Thank you. Uh, have I summed Satanda up correctly? Uh, yeah, you have. Uh, you know, our, our core goal with Satanda is to really get out into the community and make a difference. Sure. Um, you know, we, we're focusing at the moment on ECD centers. Um, and yeah, we're just trying to make a positive difference out there. Yeah, great, Gareth. Um, Ryan, tell me about the conversation um, amongst three friends a couple of years ago that led to what we now know as Satanda. What was, how did that come about? And what was the nature of the conversation that led to this, this decision? Yeah, Ryan, uh, the famous <laughs> coffee conversation question. Um, it really is where it all started. Uh, Gareth called us up, myself and Nick, and said, boys, let's go for a coffee. Yeah. Um, around the table, we decided let's do something bigger than ourselves. Uh, we come from very fortunate backgrounds, very blessed upbringings. And it was literally that moment we stepped away from the table knowing our confidence in each other and therefore knowing what we could possibly achieve together. Okay, so, so Gareth, it was really something on your heart, eh? Uh, yeah, so I, I was um, studying it at that stage of my life through Gibbs and I uh, had a fantastic um, educator that we were on one of the courses we were on. Yeah. And um, she really showed us the importance of, you know, uh, of what we can do individually mm. and when we come together even more so what we can achieve sure, sure. Um, she kind of you know put the calling on on our class in general um, and really showed us that we have we do have this responsibility as a generation to kind of you know leave our mark on the earth in a positive uh, manner and that kind of you know sparked something in me yeah I don't know where to start or anything like that <laughs> so I, you know kind of pulled the the two greatest men I knew into into a room to have a yeah. conversation and we just kind of yeah. you know started from there and what was Ryan and Nick's response were they like uh, okay <laughs> we'll get back to you <laughs> yeah I know first of all when I said coffee and not beer I think they yeah. panicked a bit oh, okay this is serious stuff <laughs> um yeah it, it was it was a very relaxed conversation I think I just you know kind of put my heart on the table and just yeah said what, what I felt and yeah. and um obviously the reason why the three of us kind of sat down in the first place is because they we all very like-minded mm. um so it, i didn't think it would come as a as a surprise yeah. to them obviously um but yeah it it was great the guys were on board from the beginning we again we didn't know 
what saying yes meant at that mm. stage. I think if, if we knew now, <laughs> you know, we might have compl- contemplated it for a little Maybe bit longer. Maybe the beer would have been a better option. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. But yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was great. I think we we all kind of said there that in in principle and in concept, it was a it was a great idea and something mm. that we would like to work towards. Um, part of that conversation was you know to to kind of create that legacy to to mm. we when I was chatting with them, I said you know when we're older and we sit in the rocking chair when we're seventy. Um, That's exactly what you did test. say. Yeah, <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah, and I was I was just like you know what what do you look back on? What will you yeah. be proud of? Yeah. Um, and you, you know what will make you sleep better at night? Yeah. And and I think from that our vision was born. Mm. You know when we're just looking down the line, not mm. getting too caught up in the now. Um, we knew what we kind of wanted to achieve. Mm. Um, not like uh, cause specific or anything, but we knew we wanted to make a positive difference. Um, and then, yeah, I think, you know, the race has just been a roller coaster from there. I can imagine. Ryan, tell me, with so many prevalent issues in society in South Africa today, why, why, why early childhood development specifically? Yeah, Ryan, so someone once told me, like, what breaks your heart, uh, that's mm. where you'll find passion. Sure. And I never really understood it until I started walking this journey. And it, it's so true. Um, we went into the Komashi Valley. In Natal. Because you guys are all from Durban, huh? Yes, yeah, yeah, we're Natal boys. Gareth yeah, the Jobber boy. I to be. I'm from here, but I've been spent a while down there. Yeah. <laughs> He's not quite sure. Yeah. Um, so we went into the Kumashu Valley and yeah. uh, we met Doris and Bongani Kumala, who are the current mother and father of our ECD facility there. And I think it all just started where we saw like very young children not being supervised, not in a caring environment, not mm-hmm. being educated and stimulated. Mm-hmm. And we literally, we couldn't step away. We knew yeah. we were called to do something there. And, you know, it's, it's got us to where we are now. And we're very passionate about what, what young people need and what mm-hmm. young people deserve. And education is, you know, a basic human right. I mean, the stats are, are horrifying, the stats that I got from you guys. Um, in South Africa, children aged between uh, 0 to 4 years, which make up 10.4% of the population, um, yet 84% of this group do not have access to early childhood development. I can understand how it would target your heart. To True, be honest, and we saw it in a yeah. very, you know, concentrated small yeah. area, and mm. the impact was significant on our lives. So, mm. when I try and think to that stat, to be dead honest, my brain can't really yeah. process it all. It just shows you like how much we can do and what impact we can exactly. really make. Don't realize yeah. you actually put yourself out there. Huh? I think just to add on that, I mean, when we realized, um, you know, we saw these stats and we saw the the kind of you know horrific state of of what people don't have access mm. to. Um, but I think what, what really clinched at our hearts as well is is when we realized, we did a bit of research and we realized how expensive and inefficient it is to correct uh, these later. issues later. Because, yeah. you know, ECD is such a fundamental part of a, of a person's development. Mm. Um, and for kids that miss that and they come into grade one already on the back foot, mm. their chance of getting through the schooling system is, is really low um, to begin with. And, you know, if they do even make it through. Mm. And then... Um, the cost to rectify that as well is is Crazy. just massive. You know, it's, it's about eight times the cost. So for every dollar you spend on ECD, you would need to spend about eight dollars. Correct. Um, you know, when sure. the kids are in school. Frightening. Tell me, are you guys fathers, Brian, Gary? <laughs> no, we're still chasing that, that you know of. <laughs> <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Look forward to the okay. day, but yeah, no, no pressure and no rush. Interesting that that uh, children are then so um, heavily on your heart, but I mean, a, a noble cause none, nonetheless. Um, how supportive um, Ryan is government with regards to ECD? Um, I note that you guys uh, refer to ECD as a basic human right. Yeah. So, you know, we essentially obviously want government funding and support, but what we set out to do from the beginning, and we know the difficulties in getting our hands on that support, Mm. it is limited as well. So we said to ourselves, let's show people what we can do. You know, that first school was all built through individual efforts, um, fundraising events, and just guys wanting to show people what was possible, Mm. refining the model, getting the blueprint 100% accurate, and then showing government that this is possible. Yeah. You know, if we can get your backing, yeah. opportunities are endless. And have you seen an improvement in relations with government? Have you approached them yet? We haven't approached them formally yet. Okay. Uh, we certainly would like to, but we know that it's more about building our brand, building mm. confidence in our model, mm. and then going to them with something that they really can't refuse. Mm. I like that. I like that it's a responsible. It's putting your money where your mouth is. It's not just going in saying, please, I need 10 million rand to build something. Oh, I think I've got the right approach. Yes. It's a case of I actually believe I'm doing the right thing, and I'll put my own money or what, however you guys have done it. Um, so hats off to you guys for that. Um, Thank you. Gareth, um, which communities do you guys seek to partner and, partner and collaborate with? How, do you decide, how did you decide Komashu in those days? So, I think just to take a step back in terms of in terms of that journey. So when we started this this charity or MPO, uh, we didn't 
have a specific cause in mind. So mm-hmm. as we said earlier, we didn't go straight into ECDs and, mm-hmm. and you know, that was our, that was our, our calling. Um, probably because we're not fathers, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but, um, so we started and we had, we, the thinking behind it was that we'll create events, fun events, pull people who, who typically would like the idea of doing something good. Mm. They kind of don't have the means or the, you know, it's not easy enough. Like, yeah. you know, I, I sat there that day and I was like, yeah. if I wanted to give today, where would I start? Yeah. And the fact that I didn't know that answer straight away mm. was I think part of the problem that we were trying to solve. Um, so we started off and we went out into the community uh, and we tried to find causes and charities uh, that were doing great stuff already. Mm. And we would create our events, raise the money and then, you know, tell everybody about these amazing people in the communities and then donate the funds to them. Sure. Obviously, uh, up until recently, this has been a part time thing on our side. So from a time commitment point of view to take mm. on something mm-hmm. ourselves wasn't easy. Sure. Uh, you know, we all relatively young guys trying to trying to make it in a big bad world yeah and then um through that we did we did several charities through that we raised funds to to initially it was for an abortion clinic then we went to schools we started we did a golf day where we raised money for to put children into school so i think that was our intro into that into that avenue and then as we went um on from there we kind of came across ekutileni mm-hmm. when we went down to ekutileni um, we met Doris and Mongani, uh, yeah, who are the mother and father of this, of this at that time at crash. Yeah. And when we heard their story and what they were doing with what they had, uh, we realized that we couldn't now go back and just raise money to give to, uh, like charities that already had corporate mm. funding and had good funding. Mm. Um, and that was really the turning point, I think, for Sitanda. Um, and yeah, you know, the reason why I mentioned a beer earlier is because <laughs> you know now we've taken on a on a baby, and it's mm. uh, we you know we have to nurture nurture this thing, and it's sure. and we're loving every minute of it. But for mm. sure now, from a time consuming point of view, yeah. um, it's been very hectic. Ryan's just uh, stepped out of his corporate realm to to um, you know mm. kind of hit this thing up full time, which is absolutely fantastic, and sure. I think it's the beginning of a of a of a great road for us. But mm. so sorry, I'm I've kind of sidetracked there, but. Mm. We didn't find Ekutileni, Ekutileni found us, if, okay. I, can, if I can say oh, it like yeah, that. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it opened our eyes and now we are searching and you know we've got ambitious goals to go out there and find more communities, mm. find more people like Doris and Bongani, mm. share their story okay. and educate kids. Great. Um, guys, send us your questions on Facebook and on Twitter. You'll see on my Facebook, uh, um, my blog Facebook uh, platform, you'll see there is a, a live stream happening at the moment. Send us your questions for Ryan and Gareth. Um, I'll be back shortly with the guys. This is Soapbox Radio. Potting it out there. Potting it out there with my lime boots. The Lifestyle Edit. Share your thoughts and be part of the show now. Send a message on Twitter or Facebook at my lime boots. Find my lime boots on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at my lime boots and on you 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 YouTube. At my line boots live. I'm back in live this afternoon chatting to the guys from Satanda Upliftment Project, Gareth and Ryan. Um, Ryan, talk to me about the ECD centers, the early childhood development centers, which are at the heart of this project at the moment, the actual center itself. Um, yeah, Ryan, I think the key word behind that and the entire ECD model is sustainability. It's what corporates want to see, it's what we want to be able to step back from one day and let it run itself with the help of the community. Mm. So our ECD centers don't only educate the children, uh, we have a feeding scheme in our centers. We also try and go the green solution, you know, Mm. solar partners, water harvesting and treatment partners. So we're trying to find a solution and refine a blueprint that is effectively green, cost effective and upskills the community at the same time. You Mm. know, it's all good us going in there with the curriculum and teaching the kids, which education is fundamentally important. But it's also our teachers, you know, women who are so selfless and teach these kids, we also need to make sure that they are skilled appropriately. Mm. You know, push them through a training system, allow them to get qualified in order to teach. And that's when we, like I said, one day step back from the situation, it Mm. it can look after itself. And we've actually empowered people to go further. I think Gareth wants to just touch on something. Yeah, I think um, another thing to say with that is we've kind of got, as part of this, we call them ecosystems, where, you know, just like an ecosystem, everything must support each other and it must become self-sufficient. So our kind of goal is to be able to come in, put the the procedures and processes in place, bring in in the sustainability, 
but then to be able to walk away in five years, having donated the buildings and okay. all the all yeah. the and all the skills transfer mm. to a point where that school is a, is able to you know provide for the people who are running it and who are involved in it, um, uplift the community, and for them to have the skills now to then go out and do a ripple effect and so take that. So that, that's the period. That's the investment, or not investment time horizon, but that's the project time horizon. Five years. Huh? Well, yeah, that, that's our goal. So yeah. that's what we're working okay. towards now. I think any less than that might be. Um, you, you know, too fast. Mm. Uh, we, we're not in a rush to get out by any means, but we do need to have a goal that we work towards. Mm. If, if it's longer, it's longer. I mean, mm. th that's not an issue. Sure, so um, it, yeah. 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 But um, it's really about you know for us, it's super important to to push that that uh, knowledge transfer to the to the okay. community. All right. So, Ron, tell me what goes on at an ECD? Where does the curriculum come from? Is it something that you guys write yourself, or have you sourced it from? Curriculum pro providers. Uh, curriculum is just one of the things I'm thinking about. Sure, sure. So yeah. So what we like to call it is like a, a plug and play sort of concept. Mm. So we wanted to go the whole route, but it's it's a long process. It's a difficult process, and there are a lot of dead ends, red tape, etc. So in our model, we got like for curriculum uh, as a, as an example. Uh, you you ask the professionals to come in. You know, there's excellent curriculums out there, mm. and curriculums which are specific to these environments. You know, I say this with respect that mm. the curriculum that you might be teaching in in Santon and the areas we are blessed to come from mm. won't necessarily 100% sure. fit into these rural locations. Mm. They don't have the same aids, etc. So we we adapted with people who have been doing it for years, and we're in touch with a wonderful woman who's been doing it in another community for this is her 11th year. And she's refined that curriculum model to a point where she says to us, guys, I've now got the answer. Mm. And I love what your hearts are standing for. Mm. Let me plug in with the curriculum. Mm. And then, of course, the solar, et cetera, you know, our building partners and things like that. So that we can provide an all-inclusive situation that does the magic work down in these locations. And the building partners into, that go into the building are also sourced locally from the community. It's a 360-degree it's a approach to community. Certainly, yeah. yeah. Mm. So... Our building partners currently, I'm going to let Gareth touch on it. Okay. Um, you know, just incredible support that's come forward. Guys, mm -hmm. maybe you want to let them know about Elan. Yeah, so uh, maybe another point around our ecosystem is that we're trying to partner um, in all aspects with people that are, or businesses that are experts in that field. So, mm -hmm. I mean, a, a really great example is is our building partner, Equity, I mean, uh, Elangeni. Uh, buildings. Mm. Uh, they came on board. Uh, we didn't actually have enough money to build the school at the time, mm. and they came on. They built. We gave them what we could, sure. and they, you know, they kind of said, well, "Give us, give us, you know, what you can when you can." Um, sure. And and just that gesture in itself, mm. you know, That's quite something. made us choose them as our building sure, partner sure. because if you've got people who can identify with what we're trying to do and mm. help us get there that much quicker mm. and faster and mm. cheaper, um, you know, that that's what we're doing. So from from um, you know the water purification systems we want to put in the solar for the electricity uh the the dietitians that are coming on board mm -hmm. to help us with mm -hmm. with building plans for these kids how how to feed them educate the parents on how to feed the kids outside of school mm -hmm. um what else is there the, yeah it's just it doesn't stop i mean we've just had some guys donate some some containers to us um learning material education material toys these are partners that that you know we could go if money wasn't an issue obviously we had 10 million rand we could go and just buy everything ourselves mm -hmm. but that's also not the point of this um and and we're glad we we, we kind of resource um you know stuck it sure. all, most of the time yeah ryan it comes down to exceptional people out there truly mm -hmm. wanting to do unbelievably good things you yeah, know yeah. they're there Mm -hmm. uh, you, if you choose to see them, they certainly are there, and we are super grateful for the people who have chosen to walk this mm -hmm. journey with us. Where, where does this model come from? I mean, is it a model that you guys are uh, cop <laughs> not copy and pasting, but I mean, mm -hmm. are you, you're putting together and constructing as you go along, or have you loosely based it on something that's been done in, say, in similar countries like, say, South America, South American countries? Um, where, where's, where's it coming from? So it's, yeah, it's, it's our own. Um, we, we saw what's been done out there. We understand that if you have the funding and the means to go and uplift a community, you can go in there and do it. Mm -hmm. But more important to us was, again, the sustainability and the cost effectiveness. If we could show that you can put a great model together mm -hmm. with all the plug and play mm -hmm. partners and then replicate that, sure. if we are blessed 10, 50, 100 times, mm -hmm. then you really are able to make a significant difference. Mm -hmm. But we certainly are feeling our way through this. I mean, this isn't yeah, something sure. that we're copying and pasting. I, I don't think you can. I think mean, South Africa is such a unique place. Well, exactly. Um, just Google it and then, oh, look, yeah. there's a template. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, there it's we go. $9 a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. It, you know, there's been a lot of uh, hard and valuable lessons we've learned along the way on that. Mm, we've had definitely. our fingers burned once or twice. And, sure. you know, we, we ourselves learned 
you know just how um different different cultures and communities are um you know sometimes you think you're doing good but you're actually annoying people it's sure. you know there's there's so many dynamics that uh, you don't know until you know yeah. um and that's why it's been great for us as well we've we've learned a lot and i think we you know it's really coming together now um it looks like a great ecosystem it mm. it works really well so yeah yeah great yeah, eh? sure in. okay guys hang around uh, when we come back we're going to carry on chatting to gareth and ryan you're tuned in to Soapbox Radio. To Soapbox Radio. Podding it out there with, with My Line, line Boots. Share your thoughts and be part of the show now. Send a message on Twitter or Facebook at My Line Boots. Find My Line Boots on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. At My Line Boots. And on you, 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 YouTube. At My Line Boots Live. I'm back this afternoon chatting to Ryan and Gareth uh, from Satanda Upliftment Project about early childhood development educational issues here in South Africa. Um, Ryan, talk to me around um, what are the, some of the day-to-day realities being faced by, by children in, in these underprivileged communities? Yeah, Ryan, I think it's a, it's a lack of, you know. You go in there and for me you see how little they have, but with so little, how much they're able to do together as a mm. community, I mean... Uh, you take Doris and Bungani Kamalo as an example and how they just chose before even our paths crossed to look after kids. Mm. Um, you know, if she had food, she would feed the kids. If she didn't have food, she would make another make option, make a plan, yeah. feed some, the ones who mm. needed it most. Mm. And I think that speaks volumes because it says people who have little but choose to do much with it mm. shows you that when you go in there effectively and with a solution and a framework, not to take over but to give them something to to meet you know mm-hmm. then you start seeing that ripple effect of good flowing through the community yeah speaking of ripple effect gareth uh, do you see um, any glimmers of hope bearing in mind the recent monumental changes we're experiencing in south africa yeah experienced? I, I think i'm gonna let ryan um sorry did i get it the wrong way around sorry. Yeah, no it's cool <laughs> uh, i'm gonna let ryan onto that because sorry. he's just had something really uh, awesome happen through one of the gibbs uh, courses he's doing at gibbs at the moment uh, i think that i think that'll you know answer your question so yeah ryan. so obviously um you know you don't always have the answers uh, going forward it's just you know you rely heavily on f- on your faith and you just move forward positively and mm. i was recently very fortunate to join a, a, a gibbs course um it's by the young professionals association I went in there and just from being in that lecture room, a girl stood up. She was the first lady that I heard talk uh, in the course and she pitched her idea. And her idea was ECD education with a sustainable solution oh, really? to uplift communities. Yeah. And I, I saw her as an absolute gift. I approached her after the class and I said to her, you know, Mosima, our, our, our stars have aligned. You know, we're yeah. after the same thing here. Yeah. Yeah. And that just shows, you know, a wonderful African lady with a passion to do more. She's her, herself from Limpopo. Yeah. She um, grew up in a rural area and didn't have the means to an ECD education that she would have liked. So she now wants to make that difference. And it's that, you know, let's put it down to it. A young white male, a young African woman coming together by yeah. being in a classroom. Yeah. And now we get to build on this, this sure. glimmer of hope and this dream. Yeah, and I think to the shed on the glimmers of hope, Mm -hmm. you know, the fact that she was in that classroom Mm -hmm. at Gibbs, which is a fantastic institution, Mm -hmm. um, you know, that, you know, yeah, beautiful, yeah. Really. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, Gareth, um, how can people listening, say someone like myself, how can we work with you guys towards bringing positive change in these communities? So, we currently in Durban, I think that's that's been our, you know, um, we're trying to move and and get the, the next... Um, ECD centers we open up will certainly be in Gauteng. In Gauteng. Okay. So, you know, we've got a lot of guys coming at the moment saying, how can we volunteer? How can we do things in Joburg? And we, we don't necessarily have anything at the moment. We do do a lot of stuff uh, like sticker sales. We do our events, which, you know, just by being there, mm-hmm. you're raising funds. Um, one of our projects that we do is every month or six weeks, we do a clothing sale down in Durban at the school where we sell um, old, our secondhand clothing okay. back to the community for 10 Rand. Okay. So they sure. get nice clothing and, mm. you know, we raise a good amount of money to, yeah. to run the school. So I think that you, as a first port of call, if you've got any old clothes, which I know mm. everybody does. Yeah, I'm so busy clearing out my cupboard at the moment, actually. <laughs> We're coming for you. Yeah, you, start you, you might have it so tomorrow the, already. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I need space at home. Yeah. So that, that would probably be the first port of call. Yeah. Something that could really benefit. Um, you know, you give us 10 items, mm. you've raised 100, 100 sure. rand for the community. And it's, mm. that's a sustain, another sustainable aspect where we're raising that in the community. Mm. You know? mm. They're getting the benefit of cheap clothes and sure. they're helping fund their own um, ECD center. I really like that idea. I mean, that mm. just makes 
makes so much sense. Like ten items is a hundred rand. Yeah, yeah. And, and and how many people have yeah. clothes that they haven't worn in sure. five years that these guys dream mm, about? You know, no, uh, your the old uh, mm. Ed Hardy stuff is, is <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> very valued there. Got a second so, laugh coming. Yeah, exactly. On so, what Gary said this. Sorry, Ryan. Sorry, mm. guys. Like also, we have our events. You know, we have our platforms, uh, social media. Funding is one thing. But I think we need to also look at skill sets. You know, we call mm. it sweat equity. Mm. Yeah, Us yeah. sitting here with you in your space and getting exposure, you know. Mm. It wasn't anyone coming forward with a monetary donation, although we need sure. that. But we essentially run this as a business, a business that is trying to break through with a lot of love. Mm. And if people can come forward and see like, okay, let's help these guys. Let's walk the journey. You know, mm. you, PR companies, mm. guys who are getting our brands to align with our model, mm. things like that, necessary skill sets that we might not have. Mm. I think that's another avenue that people tend to forget about. Funding's yeah. one thing, sure, um, but there's a whole lot of other stuff that all people could use help yeah. with. Hundred percent. Yeah, and I, I think also just sorry, one last thing to elaborate on that is, you know, we've had incredible people that we've met along the way, um, people that have come in uh, to volunteer time, resources, and skills um, from architects to public relation people in the public relations space mm. you know all the critical components that, that, that you would need in a business we still mm. need to get mm. the word out sure, there for this sure. you know we need, to, we need to get the right attention of the right people at the end of the day mm. uh, if we want to you know turn this thing into something where we can have a hundred schools sure which 100%. we will get we're yes. getting you guys day. on the way there <laughs> <laughs> set it on radio so there it must be we true. go no, now you've um, committed to it eh? <laughs> yeah so so yo I, I that list is really long, so I, I think rather ask yeah, um, and see how it can be and, accommodated, and, and and we'll find a way to help you plug in. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, at the end of the day, going back to what I said earlier, this was started as a way for people who want to give back to give back easier. Mm -hmm. Whether that's money, whether that's time, mm -hmm. um, whatever it is, like mm -hmm. get hold of us and and we'll 100%. plug you in. We'll yeah, plug 100%. you in. Yeah. Um, as we as we start to wrap up, Ryan, um, you list as an element in your core values. You quote faith. Um, as being a core value, so actually the first of your list. Um, are you guys men of faith? And if so, how does this impact your mission um, as the Tonda? Sure, yeah, Ryan, I love this one. Um, we are men of faith, to okay. answer your question directly. Okay. Um, I don't think we would have ever got to where we are if it wasn't for our faith system. In saying that, though, we do not separate, divide, or subjugate which faith you know people should follow. We mm -hmm. understand that there are many faith systems out there, and we respect that most of all. Sure. We are strong in our faith system, but we welcome people from all walks of life, you know, and let's just come together and ultimately pour into something which, as we said, is a lot bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Great. Great to great to see you guys standing up for, for what you believe in and, and putting it out there Thank um, you. And, and declaring it. Uh, much blessing to you guys as you as you continue. Um, Gareth, as we as we finish with you, where can guys get hold of? We spoke about getting in touch with you guys. Where can people get hold of Setanda? So Facebook is probably the best port of call at the moment. Um, Sitanda Development Projects, uh, long name, I know, but uh, we've got a page on there that's very active and we've got a good growing like uh, community base mm. of members. Um, on our website, it's just, uh, we're busy doing a revamp on that, but all our contact details are there. Um, if you're not sure how you want to or mm. where to start, uh, go online there, there's all the email addresses, the relevant email addresses, Give us a, give, drop us a line and we'll plug you into the right WhatsApp group. We've got fantastic groups on all different types of causes and um yeah we built like a community there there's Definitely. lots of friendships that have been built out of that that you know go far beyond sitanda mm. uh, people that have met at our events and all of that so mm. i think that's a great place to start and even if you just want to get added to a group sure. and sit back quietly suss it out and then you know raise your hand when you when yeah. you're ready then, yeah, then yeah, that's yeah. great yeah, sure. let's do it. great guys thank you for your time um that brings us to the end of yet another um interesting show with much to ponder and consider <laughs> Ryan and Gareth, I wish you guys nothing but continued success as you work towards this rather noble goal. I pray the Lord's blessing upon both of you, all three of you, everyone who's involved in your in, in your um, project. And I just pray that um, much fruit is coming, well, is to come, has already come and will continue to come from, from this. Um, and I hope that people get hold of you and really find their ways that they can tap into what you guys are doing. Thank you for your time. Ryan, thank, thank you. you. It means a massive amount to us. Thank you so much. Guys, that was a great show. Um, next week, we've got a rather interesting show. We're going to be discussing the water crisis down in Cape Town, so make sure you, you join us. I've got three guests from Cape Town, so it's going to be a bit of a juggling act between the four of us um, next week. Um, don't forget to join the WhatsApp notification list if you want um, notifications each time we go 
live as Soapbox Radio. Send me on any one of my platforms, your, your South African cell number. I'll add you to the list and you'll get a notice. It's been great being back with you guys again this week. That was Soapbox Radio and I'm out of here. You've been listening to Soapbox Radio. Potting it out there with my, 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 my lime boots. <laughs>